at what happened in the Brexit um, crisis, if you want to call it that now. People lost a lot of faith in the fiat currencies like the pound during that crisis. If you monitor the price of Bitcoin, you will see that that price shot up at that time. What happened? People moved their money into Bitcoin. They actually saw it as a secure form of value, and it actually had a lot of credibility in a time of crisis. So it isn't some, you know, currency that's used by the drug lords. A lot of people are using it as a legitimate form of, of safety and security. The housing one, the, the government of Honduras has recently announced that they are moving their entire deeds office onto a blockchain. And the music one, um, there's, there's a great song, and I highly recommend you download it. It's called Welcome to the Blockchain. Um, and, it's, and it's a musician, and he's wanting to put his music onto the blockchain instead of going through iTunes. And the song is really good. I know I've, I've said the song's good. It's a rap song, but, but <laughs> and I don't like rap music, but the point is, is that it, it, if you want to ever explain what Bitcoin and blockchain or whatever is to somebody in one second, you download that song, it's got little subtitles to it, and it explains it so well. I really take my hat off to, to the guy who wrote it. So it's called Welcome to the Blockchain, and it's a great piece of music. All right, so that's happening today. All right, but let's have a little bit of a reality check. <laughs> okay. The blockchain is probably never going to exist, all right? Society, we cannot even agree on what side of the road to drive on. So imagine all of us agreeing to all go and put every single asset we have onto the same piece of technology. I don't think it's really going to happen tomorrow, all right? So, so I don't think that we're ever going to have a blockchain where there's one blockchain where all the assets sit. What could potentially happen, like in the Honduras example, there will be a housing blockchain, there might be a different one for cars, there might be a different one for shares, cash, and they might be able to speak to each other. But I don't think we're ever going to end up with one official blockchain. The next one is that there's no standards and governance at the moment. The whole world is running around trying to set standards and governance and how this thing's going to work. We way off that right now. The technology is really in its infancy. Um, there was recently a, a hack, and I say hack in inverted commas, of um, the DAO, which is on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. And um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of work still to be done from a technology point of view. There's also dispute resolution. If, if two of you enter into a transaction on the blockchain and you don't like it, you can't exactly sue the computer. So there's a few issues that need, need to be sort, sorted out from that perspective. And then finally, there's this fallacy that it's free. And it's not free, okay? At the moment, the, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain takes them the same amount of electricity to power every day that it takes to power Ireland as a country, all right? And they are doing uh, seven transactions every, no, yeah, they're doing seven transactions a second, all right? Visa does 2,000 a second. So if you're using that much electricity to do seven transactions, imagine how much 2,000 is gonna cost. So people have this fallacy that it's for free, but there's definitely a cost implication for it. And yes, people are developing the to technology to, to overcome some of that, but it's not going to happen overnight tomorrow. In 2015, there was a billion, a billion dollars sorry, spent on blockchain technology. Anybody want to take a guess where we are at the moment? You can try 10 times that amount. The amount of money that the world is putting into blockchain development right now is 10 billion US dollars in 2016. So the amount of investment is absolutely huge because people can see the, the potential, the opportunities, and the threats of what this technology can do. This uh, diagram is just showing you some of the, the interest from some of the banks around the world. And this is what a lot of the banks are either doing stuff in-house or they're buying fintech startups or partnering with fintech startups. And this is showing when some of the big banks around the world made, made their first investments into blockchain. And this is just a microcosm of the payment space, just one aspect of financial services. And you can have a look here. These are the companies that are currently involved in blockchain. It is huge. I, I, I think I've lost track of how many fintech startups there are, but there are thousands and thousands around the world who have all decided that this is the greatest thing. And, and the debates in this, the, in this space are saying, is it going to be the beta VHS race? Is it going to be the... You know, the Yahoo, Google, the MySpace, Facebook, the, those are the discussions that, that is happening right now. And there's a huge, huge hype around this. And I think what will happen is we, we're going up this hype cycle. It's going to come down a bit, 
but give it a few years and we'll all be using it in the same way as we use the internet today. So it's definitely, it's definitely on the up, but you can see how many players are playing in this space. All right, so I just want to give you this quote. Any company not making the investment in adopting this technology will cease to exist, and even adopting it is no guarantee that they'll survive.